If you're in the market for a fast family Audi, this is the car to get. It's the RS6 Avant and it's here in the United States for the first time. Or do you buy something like this? The Audi RS7, it has the exact same engine as the RS6 and it has some you know, slightly different sport back looks. Or do you do the very American thing, which is to go for the SUV, the Audi RS Q8. This is basically a Lamborghini Urus, just in more discreet clothing. I guess the point is you have options now. So today we're here to find out which RS is best. Before we get started with the walk around of the RS6, I have two people helping me out today. Motor1.com senior editor Brett Evans is here, and we have Motor1 contributor and freelance journalist Miles Brandman. And I'll also point out we're on a bit of a busy canyon road, so if you hear any traffic noise, forgive me. This is the RS6, and it starts actually the cheapest at $109,000. It uses a twin turbocharged 4 liter V8, and it makes 591 horsepower and 590 pound feet of torque. This car is finished in Sebring Black Crystal. It's a metallic paint and I don't like it. We're allowed to argue about the small details with these three because there's not too many different things going on. The paint job costs $1,000, which actually isn't too unreasonable. But come on, if you're going for the RS6, you have to do something crazy, right? Give me Nardo, red, green, something that's just a little more eye-catching. The other part where I know I'm gonna differ from my colleagues here is this car does not have the black optics package. So here we can see the Audi rings. Then we have this aluminum trim. I think Audi calls it Alu Optic, which is hard to pronounce. But that's what sets this car apart from those two. The RSQ8 is going to have more of a carbon fiber finish, and the RS7 has a black finish. But this does stand out against the black paint, I will say that. If I was specking my own, I'm going for that black optics package. Optional 22 inch wheels wrapped in section 285 tires at all four corners. They're absolutely massive. And then again, back into the nitty gritty details. This is the best angle of the car, right? From this portion on back is what sets the RS6 apart from the RS7 and certainly the RSQ8. This angle of the car is absolutely what sells the RS6 for me. Otherwise, they're just not too different. And here's a fun little design element right here. You see how this body line stops here and then picks up again uh, with the little break in the section? Well, that recalls old Audi Quattro products from the 80s and 90s. It's a cool little design touch that neither of the other two cars have. And come around back, so we have a few different things going on here. Right here specifically, this one doesn't have the unibrow taillight. I know that's not officially what it's called, but you know, it's how you can tell them apart. Both the seven and the eight feature a nice uh, strip of taillight that goes all the way across. And I like that the RS6 breaks it apart. It kind of sets it apart from the range too. You get a nice look at these flared out fenders as well. It looks so, so aggressive as a wagon. And then I'm gonna rip on it for just a second because with this Alu Optic trim, you get this giant strip of aluminum that goes across the back of the car. Yucky, no thank you. If you do it in carbon fiber or black, it looks that much better. But overall, that trim piece, not too much of a fan. But where it redeems itself, of course, is right here in the trunk. Look at all that space. I don't understand why Americans don't buy wagons, especially ones that look just like this. This is the Audi R7 Sportback. It starts at $114,000, so more expensive than both the RSQ8 and the RS6. However, it uses the same 4-liter twin-turbo V8 motor, making the same 591 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. Now, let's talk about styling. So, differentiating itself from the RS6 and RSQ8, we have the black optic package. So, aluminum optic, RS6, carbon optic, and the RSQ8 black optic here. So, the four rings are now in black. The front grille is all black. That's gonna be the same across the board. And then we have these really cool LED matrix headlights. They've got some amazing animations when you lock or unlock the car to welcome you or say goodbye. Coming to the side, we see a set of 22 inch wheels. And doesn't that just sound ridiculous? 22 inch wheels, and yet somehow, we'll get into this later, the ride quality is not that bad. The braking hardware is impressive as well. 10 piston front calipers, single piston floating rear calipers, some of the biggest brakes on any production car. Moving to the back, more black optic around the windows, and then of course, the sport back look. This is why you buy the RS7 as opposed to the RS6 or RSQ8. It's for that gently tapering roof line, and we get to the rear end, and here is where this is unlike a sedan, because you don't just have a trunk, you've got a hatchback. 
I mean, you have more capacity in this trunk, and most notably, you've got the height. So with the trunk, it's all just gonna be like this, but here we have the move up, and so you can put in more taller items with that same length of a sedan. And then we close this, and then we see the unibrow, the unibrow. I don't really like this rear end. I much prefer the previous generation RS7, but of course they couldn't just carry that over, so they had to do something new. And what they did is what looks like a rumpled sheet. That's what it looks like to me. But getting down below, the black optic is settling up the very overt diffuser that is much better seen on the RS6 Avant. And I actually love that. I love that a very subtle brand went out and did something kind of crazy. You do have these large oval exhaust ports, and that kind of finishes up the RS7's look. Do I like the rear end as much as the RS6? No, but the rest of it is pretty darn good looking. That leaves me with the big one, the RS Q8. It starts at $113,000, just a little bit less than the RS7 and a little bit more than the RS6. And this might sound familiar, but it has a four liter twin turbocharged V8 with 591 horsepower and 590, you guessed it, pound feet of torque. Now, although it starts a little bit less than the RS7, Audi made up for it with this particular example with this carbon optic exterior package. The RS6 has aluminum, the RS7 has black optic, and the RS Q8 has carbon optic. Like the black optic package, you do get the black rings, but just about everything else on the vehicle is carbon fiber, starting with this grill shell and the front diffuser. You also get carbon fiber on the mirror caps and gloss black window trim. Another big ticket item that made this thing quite expensive is this set of carbon ceramic brakes. This is a $9,000 option borrowed from the Lamborghini Urus. Hiding those brakes are 23 inch wheels. That's one inch larger than the other vehicles here, wrapped in 295 series rubber. That is such a massive contact patch, but then again, it's a pretty big vehicle. As you can see, it stands much taller than the other two here. And although it's a little bit shorter from bumper to bumper, it's still very large on the road. That gives it some pretty good cargo hauling ability as well. Although the cargo area isn't quite as deep as what you'll get in the RS7 or the RS6, it's much taller, giving you more overall maximum cargo carrying capacity. The carbon package also shows up again on the rear diffuser and on this taillight panel. I side with Miles on this one though. I think the silver looks a little bit better. I also really, really hate the black Audi rings. If it's an Audi, it should be proud that it's an Audi, but different strokes for different folks. There's no denying that this thing has absolute presence and this color is much more appropriate to an RS model than either of the other vehicles here. So that's the Audi RS Q8. Now let's get on the road and have some fun. So we're about to set off in the RS6. First of all, we're sorry for the muffled audio. Yes, we're wearing masks, safety first. Second of all, we'd like to invite you to please subscribe to Miles' channel. You can see it on his mask right there, miles per hour. We're gonna put the link in the description. Go check it out. He's got a ton of great stuff. And now let's drive. Sounds good. Yes, it does sound good. <laughs> so when we thought to compare all these three cars, Obviously, they're not that different from each other, and yet there's the sort of stigma that the RS6 is just the one you have to get, right? right. And I guess my first question is, how much do we agree with that? After driving all three? Sorry, I was gonna say, after driving all three of them, I agree with it 100%. Yeah. Just like you said, like, after driving it around town and then here in a Canyon Road, where there's not any negligible difference in performance yeah. between this and the 7, it's like, why wouldn't you get the awesome look of a wagon. The thing, <laughs> the performance is basically identical. I would say the RS Q8, this is my conspiracy theory that Brett can disprove if you want. I think because the RS Q8 is taller, that when you punch it, the nose lifts a little higher, mm -hmm. which makes it seem faster, but it could just be an illusion. That thing's also on stilts, it's on 23. Yeah. So I do yeah. think that this and the white car handle much better. I think this rides a little bit better too than definitely than the RS Q8. You know, even though the RS Q8 is taller, it's got those larger wheels and um, it's on a shorter wheelbase as well, so it doesn't uh, quite handle choppy pavement quite as well. So I, I don't know. I think this is a really good all rounder. 590 horses. What we have to point out with this one is I have it in manual. Uh, this doesn't have a sport exhaust, and the other two cars do. Yes. So let's do a quick noise test. It's a little muted yeah, for my liking. it's a little muted, I agree. Uh, want you want more get a little more bark out of the, uh, the RS Q8 and the RS7 for sure. Let's talk things specific to this car so we don't have to repeat ourselves with the other two. I'm digging this interior spec. 
the most out of the three by far. 100%. It's yeah. called cognac. <laughs> <laughs> yes, these seats are amazing. I love, they're comfortable and they look fantastic. They look really good. Uh, Audi does a lot of black interiors, right? They're yeah. really good with Alcantara. They do contrast stitching, they do carbon fiber. This seems upscale even for an Audi. I think it, it's safe to say this is the nicest Audi I've ever sat inside of. Yeah, they, they learned a little Italian. They went overseas <laughs> for one summer. They came back and they're showing off. Let's it's talk. Sorry, right? It's a really interesting combination with the uh, carbon fiber as well. You usually see this kind of caramel color with the wood trim and, and seeing it with the carbon fiber, it's kind of a cool blending of the old and the new. I really like it. I have a personal vendetta against a ton of piano black. I think that they have been able to maintain the piano black like clean look up here, but then to not have it all up here in the center console area was a good move in my opinion. What do you think? I yeah. Agree. It keeps it from getting covered in fingerprints. The matte finish carbon fiber is really pretty. Yep. They did a really good job <laughs> matching the grain as well. Fun having fun. Some of the joints. <laughs> it's, it's, there is a lot of turbo lag when it's in the comfort mode. The sport knocks some of that out, but you do kind of have to be patient for the boost to kick in. Right. But when it does. <laughs> you hear it a little more in the upper part of the rim range, like above 4,500 RPM, you hear it more. I think we're unanimous on this, and this is rare for us. The carbon ceramics are not worth the money. Yeah. Yes, right? Right. I, I mean, agree. yeah, if, if you have a vendetta against brake dust, yeah, possibly. <laughs> but to spend nine grand on that for that reason wouldn't make any sense. If you're going to track it all the time, sure. These are the steels. These are on the RS6 and the RS7, and they've been kick ass. They it's haven't squeaked so nearly impressive. as much as the carbon ceramics. And there's plenty of stopping power as this truck right in front of us wants us to show yeah, off right now. Demonstrating, yeah. That was perfect. Um, I, I, I'm at a loss to describe what I don't like about this car. Not to get gushy here, this is on my podium for favorite cars I've ever driven. We can get to really boring arguments against E63 Mercedes and other cars that might do this a little better, might be more dynamic, but as an all around package, looks, performance, practicality, technology, this is a home run grand slam. This is my DD. If I'm yeah. going out and buying anything as a daily, it's this, 100%. That doesn't mean we shouldn't drive the other two cars though, because no, of course not. they have a lot going on. And with the RSQ8, there's a ton of options that these two cars don't have. And now we're in the RS7. And immediately I'm feeling like I'm more in a performance sedan. What do you think? I'm feeling like my head's about to hit the roof and I'm not even that tall. <laughs> yeah. Any tall friend, whoever you like the least out of your friend group, put them in this seat. Yeah, there's definitely a much lower roof line and a pinched rear window. You feel like you're in a coupe. I, I hate the four-door coupe, like, nomenclature. Yes. But you kind of can't argue that this definitely feels a little more coupe-like. That was a others. Ferrari Roma. Sorry to cut you off. That was a Ferrari Roma. Rude. Just For those of you watching at home, that was a Ferrari Roma. <laughs> Well, okay, so my other terrible automotive take is yeah. that the Ferrari Roma is the worst Ferrari ever built. And oh. we'd be happy to talk about that another time. Interesting. <laughs> I'm going to get it. Maybe not ever weeks. built. Not ever built. Okay. But current, worst current Ferrari for sure. Okay. Is this an Audi review? I forgot. <laughs> moving on back to where we were moving on from. It was blue too. Did you see the... Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the... RS7 is my least favorite, and I don't even know why. This yeah. is the most car feeling of the three, but if you take away some of that practicality, and it's not like it has less space in the back, but just some of the, the interior space yeah. that the other two have, yeah. it loses points for me. I don't think it's quite as special looking either. The, the balance of the RS Q8 is kind of, a, like the design balance is pretty good, and then the RS6 Avant, there's, there's one other high performance station wagon for sale on the market right now. And so that just wins points for that matter alone. RS7 is kind of just uh, it's like more of the same. It kind of seems like white noise to me. And we have to ask ourselves whether like the feeling of it being higher performance, more engaging, is that really just a mental illusion because yeah. you're actually, it isn't really that much more high end or high performing when you actually get it into a canyon road. Do you agree, like driving this though, Miles, when you look over your right shoulder, doesn't it feel like a lot less car? Doesn't that illusion really take place? I try not to look over my right shoulder because you're sitting there. Right, that's right. Well, <laughs> other than that, 
Should we talk about the Ferrari then? Well, and the other the other thing that I think helps this thing feel a little bit more dynamic is it does have the sports exhaust. So mm. you know when you get on it, Miles, give us a test. Yeah, the fun that's fun much is louder than the R S six. Yeah, the fun fun in that is pretty intense. But you know the sports exhaust is uh, only a couple it's hundred a thousand dollars, dollars a thousand, thousand dollars on this car, and I would pay three times that. Yeah, for exhaust, sure. Though. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's weird the the blue car we'll drive in a second has it in the black optics package, but this one doesn't. So I don't know if you can get it as an all a card or how that works. But one way or the other, if you're especially with the RS6 because they pretty much only special order, put the damn sport exhaust on it and you can thank us later. Yes, agreed. It is worth every penny. So how do you guys feel about the technology as well? Is it easy enough to use while you're driving? Is it distracting? What do you think? Of the twin screen setups, I think this is probably the most easy on the market. I, I still would rather just have some, you know, three dials for climate controls and call it good, but it does have a lot of cool features and, and some reconfigurable displays. And it is pretty easy to use even when you're sitting in traffic. It's not bad at all. It has one flaw. Do you want to guess without me saying it? Glare. Fingerprint. Fingerprint. Fingerprints. Ooh. Goodness, this yes. thing collects fingerprints like crazy. They give you this cool little like Audi clock <laughs> that's branded and yeah it's in the glove box like yes. that uh, you got it. and it, it works it works really well but you have to do it once a day and i'm not even that neurotic when it comes to keeping cars clean even if you wash your hands they're as clean as possible you touch the screen one time and it has your fingerprint all over it yeah, yeah. is the rs7 better than its non-audi competitors here's the thing that that will make me go to an Audi dealer every single day. This car, as equipped, is about $125,000. That would barely get you into a Panamera S, which has 150 fewer horsepower. Yeah. It's a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit more dynamic on the road, but it's just so much slower, and this is a much more emotional drive. Right. You made that point earlier in the week, and I totally agree with you. As much as we all fawn over Porsche products all the time, they're, can't believe I'm saying this, there's a little bit of a value for money with these RS cars. Yeah compared to some of their own cousins within the Volkswagen group. Here we are in the RS Q8, and first things first, <laughs> you're I'm not sitting in the middle, Miles. <laughs> I'm not sitting in the middle, you're right. Why? Because if I sat in the middle, my head would be on the roof. How tall are you? I have a longer torso. I'm six feet tall, but I've got a longer torso, okay? There's not a ton of space back there. This sort of has the, the sloped down roof that the uh, RS7 has. Yeah, not quite as tall as the Q, Q7 for sure. So this is an RS Q8. Uh -huh. It is a Lamborghini Urus, but not. Kinda, yeah. It definitely drives like a Lamborghini Urus and it sounds like one too. This sounds nice from back here. I don't know how it is up there. It sounds real nice. It this pretty good back here is up here as well. Also has the sport exhaust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it Built sounds- Built into the carbon optic package instead, which is kind of weird. How much does that package cost, Clint? It's in the black optic package. Uh -huh. So this also has carbon and black. Uh, this is this is so many options. I won't bore everybody with all of them. 113 grand to start. We end up at $138,000. Nine grand for the carbon ceramics. Three grand for black optic package. Carbon fiber is 4,500. It's loaded. It's loaded. But I'll stop talking about the Lamborghini after this. That thing starts now at 221. 221 to start. For the 21 model year, yeah. And this is pretty much loaded at a buck forty. Yeah. So you're saving eighty thousand dollars by getting this instead of a Lamborghini. And you're not really missing out on a whole lot in the way of driving performance or no. comfort. And the people at Audi Sport would love for me to remind you right now that this went faster on the Nürburgring than that Lamborghini. Really? It did. I didn't know that. Yep. So until they make a faster one or Porsche steps in with one of their faster cars. So yeah, yeah, for now. But uh, this car is stupid fast for the size SUV it is. And meanwhile, I've got tons of legroom back here. Yes. I, are you sitting on the steering wheel, Brett? Because I have <laughs> So much leg room. This I'm, is ridiculous. I'm sitting courtesy, courtesy close. Let me let me get comfortable. Okay, that's Chris. about comfortable. I still, again, six feet tall. I have so much knee room, and there's big foot pockets here, so my feet can go under the seat and really reduce that knee angle. Sure, it's really nice. Clint mentioned something interesting in the uh, in the RS6 portion, where I think because it's a little bit taller, 
when you pin the throttle, your head gets tossed back a little bit more. And I think it might just be that extra weight kind of like squatting the rear axle. So, you know, definitely a lot of sensation and motion, which is which is entertaining. And this is a fun exercise. one for rear passengers. I can watch your head up display. And That's so I can see cool. what's going on up there. It's like, oh, I'm sliding around a lot. What's happening? Oh, well, he's doing 60. That's why. I'll piggyback off Miles's point from the last car. This is on 23s and it still rides yeah. really nicely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do they do that? I don't know. And we're in dynamic <laughs> mode too. We're yeah. in the stiffest, least comfortable mode. This isn't a perfect road. It's pretty smooth, but it's not perfect. And there's really no, you know, no head toss, no harshness coming through those wheels. It's incredible. Just in case it's getting super dark now, I'm going to give us some lighting. Um, oh, that's what you look like? Yeah. Yeah, well, we figured people deserve to see you back there. Uh, hey, backseat Miles. Yes. <laughs> Give hey, me is something. That my new definition now. I'm yeah. backseat Miles. Right now, at least. Front seat Miles is more fun. Front seat Miles is more fun, but you know, you deserve to be back there a little bit too. But tell me something profound about the RSQ8. Profound. Uh, I don't know how profound it is, but I did notice earlier that the Quattro in that dashboard trim piece lights up with ambient lighting. Yeah, it does. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty neat. It's pretty awesome. It's almost as awesome as those illuminated seat belts uh, cover things mm -hmm. in the yep. six and seven. Yeah. Yeah, this one doesn't have those. I guess there's only one question left to answer to get all dramatic about it. Yeah. Where we started, which RS is best? Miles? My opinion hasn't changed, to be honest. After spending, I, well, I spent time with the cars before today. Uh, and I came to the same conclusion. The R6 Avant is, it's the do it all. Yeah. It is, it's performance, it's look, and it's comfort, and it's practicality. It's the one I would choose if I actually had lots of money. Power rank, the three for you. Power rank? Mm -hmm. R6, RSQ8, R7. The contrarian in me wants to say, I like the RSQ8 best. I do think it's a very handsome SUV, um, and I, I like the way that it handles, and it feels very composed and capable, but I completely agree with Miles that the RS6 Avant is so special and so interesting and so good at absolutely everything, while not resorting to being a crossover SUV, that my ranking would be exactly the same. RS6, RSQ8, RS7. What about you? We all three agree. The RS6 is best, How and boring. although I know Sorry. it's such a cliche that we agree for three automotive journalists, but like, yeah, go for the fast wagon. Get but the wagon. Guess yeah. what? Maybe this didn't even matter because what are they going to sell the most of? This one. Yeah. This one yeah. by a long shot yeah. too. But for anybody who goes out and buys an RS6 Avant, order it the way you want it, and and we will all pay our respects. Yeah. As you do that. I mean, I'm going to pay my respects awesome. even if you order the RSQ8 because yeah. this is a great SUV to breast point. It's it's a really well put together SUV. They deserve to sell a lot of these. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with the RS7. Just don't get it in white. Yo, <laughs> that probably shot it in the foot. Yeah, that's that was one of the smaller lessons learned today. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell the people thanks for watching? You like saying that? Sure. Thanks for watching. <laughs>